1839, Joseph G. Ray arrived in Franklin and started manufacturing cotton goods. It wouldn't be until 1871 where he would open up the Cotton Wool Company next to the Frank B. Shoddy Mill. Since the Rays arrived in Franklin, they have generated so much wealth. This allowed them to live a prosperous lifestyle, and it also gave them freedom to open up things like the Woolen Company. The Ray family's involvement continued on into 1884 with the opening of the Franklin Water Company. Although the Ray family wasn't involved in the actual opening of the company, Joseph G. Ray ended up eventually owning it. In 1901, the same year that the Murdoch and Jeb Bob and Holder Company was opened on McCarthy Street, the Ray Fabric Mills were opened. Along with the Ray family's original shoddy mill that was opened in 1849, the Ray Fabric Mills played a significant part in the development of Unionville. Franklin was divided into five distinct communities. Franklin Center, Unionville, Carryville, City Mill, and Wadsworth. Unionville, located in western Franklin, was built back in colonial times and ranked second to Franklin Center in both size and wealth. It was able to grow and develop into the second largest and wealthiest community in Franklin only after the Ray family built their mills. A year later in 1902, the daughters of Joseph G. Ray donated the science building at Dean College, which at that time was still known as Dean Academy. In 1904, Annie Ray Thayer and Lydia Ray Pierce donated the present library building to the town of Franklin. In 1904, the new home for Franklin's public library was dedicated in memory of Joseph G. Ray and his wife, Emily Rockwood Ray, and as a result, it was named the Ray Memorial Library. The library is currently located on the corner of School Street and Main Street, across the street from the library on campus at D. The Ray daughters made it a point for this building to be unique sparing no expense in hiring Tommaso Giuglaris, a prominent Italian painter, to paint the large murals located in the reference hall as well as the front entrance. Giuglaris studied with some of Italy's finest painters in Turin where he was born before immigrating in 1880 to the United States. In 1905, Annie Ray Thayer gifted the town of Franklin the Ray Schoolhouse. The Ray Schoolhouse was located on the corner of Union Street and School Street. Unfortunately, in the early 1980s, the Ray Schoolhouse burned down. In 1922, the Joseph G. Ray Fire Station was built on West Central Street. This was a gift to the town of Franklin by Annie and Adelbert Thayer. Unfortunately, about 15 years ago, the town of Franklin decided to demolish the building and replace it with a more modern one. The Ray family here in Franklin, Mass, made a lot of contributions specifically to Dean and to the community uh, as a whole. Uh, it's probably important to talk a little bit about how they got in a position to be so supportive of the town and then specifically uh, Dean and its campus. So the Ray family in the early 1800s uh, became involved in industry. Industrialism was spreading throughout New England and little uh, mills and factories were popping up in lots of towns, even little towns like this, like Franklin. And so the Ray family got into woolen goods and felting and textiles and through this industry they amassed quite a bit of wealth. There were two brothers, James and Joseph Ray, and they uh, made one specific contribution to our campus that's still really quite visible today, and that is our admissions house, the Ray House. So that's a contribution that is still, uh, uh, you know, that part of their legacy that's still part of our campus today. The daughters of Joseph uh, Ray, Annie and Lydia, were both students at Dean. And Lydia went on to graduate from Vassar College in New York, so she was the first woman of Franklin to earn a college degree. So that was a contribution that the family made as well. When Annie and Lydia inherited their family's fortune, they became extremely philanthropic and they began to donate their money all around town. One of the first structures that they built is the one that's right behind me, and that's the Ray Building. It was originally a science building, and they had laboratories and lots of chemistry and physics equipment. And on the top floor was a theater. And so this, the Ray Building, is also part of the lasting legacy of the Ray family. They also provided the funds to build the town library right on Main Street, the oldest public library in the United States, though the building uh, only dates to 1904. 
They also, in time, built a fire station, a public elementary school. Uh, those buildings no longer exist. But basically, all around Franklin, and especially here at Dean, we can see the legacy of the Ray family. So if the Ray family hadn't done all that they had done, or if they weren't here in Franklin in the first place, I think we could expect to see a different Franklin and a different Dean College. Uh, their impact was, was significant. A really good example of how important they were and how different things would be without them has to do with one of the most important stories in Dean's history, and that's with the building and unfortunately the, the demise of Dean Hall. Unfortunately, in 1872, a year after Oliver Dean died, and when the building was only four years old, it caught fire. However, somebody needed to step in and save the day, and that were the Ray family. They put up $100,000, which you can put into an inflation calculator and see how much that would be today. But they put up $100,000 in 1872 to have Ray, uh, sorry, to have Dean Hall rebuilt, and they did. Changed the architectural style a little bit, but that is the building that we have gracing our campus today. So we have the name of Dean on the college, and rightly so, Oliver Dean is a towering figure of our history. But perhaps lesser known, but also equally important, were the Rays. And without them, it's hard to imagine that anything we see around us would be the way it is today.